How would you like to have a colorist color grade your next wedding film or your next short film or maybe your next YouTube video? You have a couple of options. You could hire them or you could check out this product from Pixel Tools. Pixel Tools has two power grade collections which we're going to look at today and it was created by a colorist in consultation with other colorists about the best way to approach different techniques to get different looks. So what is a power grade? Let's go ahead and take a look. So what is a power grade? The best way I can probably show you is by going through an example. We have our first node here, and I've just made an adjustment to the exposure using the curves. And then now I'm going into our primary color wheels. I'll make an adjustment on the offset, maybe cool it down a little bit, bring it down to maybe some of the cyan. So we have our second node. I'll add an additional node. So now we have three nodes and come over into our blur and make an adjustment here. So the way that we can make our own power grade is right clicking on the footage here and choosing grab still. If we come up to our gallery in the top left, now you'll notice that we have our still and I can scrub through and maybe look at our footage if we wanted to. But if I right click and choose display node graph, not only is that an image that you can export, but it also shows all the nodes. Additionally, on the right hand side, it's showing you all the attributes that will be copied over if you were to apply this power grade. Also under clip, if we wanted to apply certain attributes to new footage, we have the option to apply just the color. Underneath that, it says apply PTZR, which is pan, tilt, zoom, and rotate, or at the bottom, just apply all. We also don't need to apply the whole grade. We can actually just drag a node right from the node graph here onto our node graph on the main window. And what I've done is add another curves adjustment to our node tree. When you purchase a power grade collection product, it will include a DaVinci Resolve project file, and that's what I have open here. I'm going to head over to the gallery on the top left, and you can see all the options that it comes with. What we're going to do is basically copy these over into new power grade folders, and this way they can be used outside of this project on all our projects. So I'm going to right click on power grade one and add a new power grade album, and then actually make a third one using the second one. And then I'll double click on the names and rename them to match what we have up top. Now there's a few ways that you can do this. You can head over to the folder and select all, control A, in my case on my Windows machine, and then drag them into the folder. It will take them out of the top folder though. The other thing that you can do is click on one of the new folders, right click and choose import. Navigate to where all the files are located, hit control A there, and then choose import. That may be a better way because this way you can actually refer back to the original file that you received from Pixel Tools and it's just as easy to do it this way. And then of course we can do the same exact thing with the other two folders. I've created this timeline. We have footage on the left. They're both the same, but the footage on the left is not log footage and the footage on the right is. So right now we're looking at the footage that isn't log. What you'll notice here is that we have a power grade from the beginning of this video and then our three additional folders, our looks, our log looks, and the utilities. Of course, we can adjust this window and you'll see all the options that we have here. The other thing you can do is expand this window here and this way we can get a huge window showing all the options that we have within this particular folder. In this case, I'm going to close out that window and what I may do is scroll down a little bit and I'll choose cyan red and there's a few ways that you can apply it. So we can right click and choose apply grade and it's replaced the node that we had there with that particular power grade. The other option we have is just to double click, same exact thing. And the last thing we can do is just drag that power grade on top of our existing node and it will replace whatever is there. Now let's pretend you wanted to add an additional power grade in this case, you can just right click and choose a pen node graph, and this will just add it to the end. Now, one thing I like to do before making any adjustments or applying LUTs or power grades like this is to white balance the footage. I just want to have that neutral starting point before I add anything on top of it. So we can add a serial node before. I'm going to disable the power grade, find a neutral part of our footage, and then white balance it that way. I can turn the power grade back on, and I think this looks a lot better, and it's probably what was intended when the product was created. 
Now this power grade is actually a compound node. So in order to see what's inside of it, what we can do is right click and choose show compound node. What this does is open up a separate window and now we can determine what's actually being done. We can hover over the icons at the bottom. Here you can see that it's using an RGB mixer and a key. So if we head over to the RGB mixer, on the right hand side, you'll notice the green was adjusted in the blue output, for example. If we head over to the key, the gain was adjusted. Same thing with the other one. If we hover over that, it will show all the adjustments that was made there. And then of course we can come down to our tools across the bottom and take a peek at what's been done. So in this case, hue versus sat, it looks like the blue has been adjusted a little bit. Now in order to get back to our main node tree, we can come to the bottom here and we can click on the name on the left hand side, which is the name of our project, and it brings us back to our main node tree. So I've removed our other power grade. Let's go ahead and apply a different power grade. I'm going to right click, choose a pen node graph. And the reason I'm choosing a pen node graph is because we already have that white balance node in the first part. And I don't want to adjust that because it's not necessary for me to do it a second time. And it's just that easy to apply a second power grade. Of course, we're not stuck with just those options. What I want to do here is right click add node at serial before because I want to adjust the exposure a little bit. I'll use the curves. I'll click on a portion of my footage that I want to increase and just adjust the exposure using the curves. And this is essentially what this product does. It makes it nice and easy and very quick for you to just apply these and have a great starting point. If we head over into the utilities folder, a lot of these are self-explanatory. One of the options, for example, is a vignette. If we scroll down a little bit, there's a skin softening option where it focuses on skin tones and makes the adjustments that way. Near the bottom, you'll notice where there's an option for 16 millimeter film grain and different levels of intensity. In fact, what I'll do is choose one of those, right click a pen node graph. And if I zoom in a little bit and I play through this footage, you may notice it in the background there, especially if I toggle it on and off where the film grain has been applied. And essentially this is what's been done. All it is is a film grain effects tool and the adjustments that were created by the Pixel Tools team. So now I've selected the log footage. Let's come up to the gallery and down to where it says the log looks, which is essentially a duplication of the other looks, but obviously geared toward log footage. It adds an additional node, and this is where you can do your log transform, depending on the type of log that the footage is. As you saw, I chose the two strip holiday. As we've seen before, the two strip holiday node is a compound node. So let's take a peek inside there. Right click, show compound node. And now we can see all the nodes that are involved with this particular one, including the green strip and the magenta strip. The middle node has the open effects color space transform effect on there. Let's head up to open effects and look at our options. And right now it's set to a different color space and gamma than what our footage is. But depending on what type of footage it is, we can make our adjustments in the input section of this tool. And then just to finish up on this particular footage, what I'll do is head over to utilities and we'll choose one of our vignette options. I will right click, choose a pen node graph just to put it at the end over there. Let's close out of our gallery window so we have more space to work with. I'll toggle the node on and off so we can see what it's doing. And it's just that easy to get a final product. These different power grades don't have to be full grades. For example, this one for cool highlights if I apply that to our footage, and I'll just append the node graph so that it follows what we've done in the first node. And then I'll toggle the node on and off, and we have that blue hue in the highlights of our footage now. I'll also click on highlight mode so you can see exactly which parts of our footage is being affected. Along with the power grades, there's a separate product called the Film Lab Power Grades, and essentially you're going to end up doing the same thing. It has its own DaVinci Resolve project file, and you can create new folders and copy these over. Now let's take a look at the Pixel Tools Film Lab options. If I come over here into the gallery, and let me expand this a little bit. We have our full node trees, and it, that is pretty much what it says. It will give you a bunch of nodes, and each will have its own function, and I will show you that in a little bit. Here we have the empty node trees, 
where it will give you a bunch of nodes, but nothing's been pre-filled for you. At least not to the extent that the full node trees have. And I'll also explain that in a little bit. And over here we have our film elements. And that includes things such as, as you may notice, the diffusion effects, uh, film dirt, 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter film grain, among a bunch of different options listed within this window. What I wanna focus on right now is are these full node trees. This particular footage is black magic footage. So what I'll do is take this power grade right here, right click and choose apply grade because this one lists BMD, which is the black magic footage. And we can close the gallery, close our open effects for a moment. And let me just rearrange this a little bit. And here is our node tree. Let's take a look at the first input. It has the FX icon, which is open FX. And it indicates once you hover, hover over it, it indicates what it is. So in this case, it's the color space transform. If we open up open effects, that's exactly what it is. Right now it's set to black magic generation four or five, four and five input color space, which is fine for this particular footage. The input gamma, however, is the film. What I'll do is change that to the video. And that looks a little bit better. On the bottom of this section here, you'll see where it says Ari Alexa for the output color space and Ari Log C for the output gamma. And that's by design. These particular power grades were set up by Pixel Tools to work in that color space in gamma. In fact, if we come over here down to the output, you'll notice where it switches back. So the input color space being the Aria Alexa and the gamma that we mentioned before, changing it to the Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, which again, Pixel Tools has this set up as. Coming down to our wheel down here into color management, we have the DaVinci YRGB and that Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So coming back to the top in our input, we have that color space transform. The next node is NR, which is noise reduction. It's disabled, so if we click on the number, we can enable it. In this particular case, we're not doing any noise reduction. And in fact, even if you are, once you perform the noise reduction, you could actually disable that potentially for playback but it's good to have this particular note at the beginning of your note tree, which is why it's nice that it's included here. Halation is this orange glow in the highlights and areas similar to that. It's probably better that I show you an example. So what I may do is just drop a link in the description below, just so you have a point of reference. And that's mostly something that you'll see in film. And because we're trying to use film in this case with the 2383 uh, Kodak film, We'll go ahead and leave this on. It's not degrading our footage at all. So in this particular case, as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and leave this enabled. And this is also a compound node. So we can right click show compound node and you'll notice all the options that we have here. Up here, it sends it back to linear. And then at the end from linear back to the loxy. So we'll come down to the bottom and we'll head back to our main node tree here. Here is Glow. This is pretty much self-explanatory. I'm sure that you're familiar with what Glow is. Let's see if we can notice what it's doing to our footage and whether or not we want to increase it. I think with this particular footage, that looks pretty good. I may even bump this up a little bit, but I don't want to have too much Glow. Again, not for me for this particular footage here. So we'll leave this as it is and we'll head over to our next row. And in this row is where we're doing our base adjustments. This first node right here is the exposure. This is using the HDR color wheels. So I'll come down here to the HDR. And what we can do here is, as the name indicates, is adjust the exposure. It's actually listed as EXP, but the intention here is to adjust the exposure. So using the global wheel right here, I'm going to increase the exposure. All right, and that looks pretty good. The next note here is our white balance. Same thing, using the global adjustment here, we can obviously cool off our footage or make it warmer. I may wanna cool this down just a little bit. And even though it looks as if the sun is coming through the window, uh, I want to make this a little bit more neutral. So we'll leave this as is. Here we have our base grade. In this case, what I might want to do is 
I want to add a little bit of contrast into this footage, but not necessarily using the contrast adjustment. So here I'll come into the shadows. Let's see what it's affecting. And it might be affecting too much. So let's see what the dark is affecting. And I think that will be good. So let me lower the exposure on the dark. And maybe just a little bit on the shadow. And again, just for some contrast, I'm going to come back up to the lighter parts of the footage. Let's see what the highlights are affecting. Okay, so let's go ahead and adjust our lights and increase the exposure here. And I think that looks pretty good. Next to the base node here, we have an, an empty node. This is if you wanted to do something in addition to what's already been done. In my case, for this particular footage, I don't want to make any additional adjustments. Again, it's nice that it's been included here. Of course, you could add it yourself, but without needing to do that, it's already listed. Uh, because it's really not doing anything, I can leave it enabled. Of course, I can disable it if I wanted to. Uh, again, because it's not really doing anything, I'm not going to touch anything, so I'll leave that one enabled. Gateweave is another one of those compound nodes, and this one includes a camera shake and also a flicker to it to kind of emulate how film looks. And this one may be better shown than me trying to explain it. Let me make sure that the playback is at half resolution, which it is, just to make sure that we can play through our footage here. And you can see what's happening. Now, if I were to disable this node, We lose any of that additional camera shake and we lose the flicker. Again, because we're trying to emulate film, I don't mind leaving it on in this case. So I'll stop playing the footage right now and I'll enable this. Here is our film emulation, our film print emulation. If I was to disable this, that's what our footage looks like. But because that's the intention of what we're doing, I'm going to go ahead and enable it. And you may have noticed this while it was playing, but there is grain applied. Once again, this is a compound node. I'm going to show you the compound node. And then of course we have all these options in here. So it's not just necessarily the grain by itself. Uh, a blur has been applied on one node. You have sharpen at the end. And there's actually a film dirt one too, if you want to add that. In this particular case, I don't, but you always have the option to come in here, click on this to enable the node, and that pretty much covers everything with the full node tree. You've already watched through the footage because I played through it when we were looking at the gate weave. Now let's take a look at the empty node trees. Not needing this anymore, what I'll do is just select all, hit delete. Coming back into the gallery, we have the empty node trees. Here's one for the BMD cameras, so the Blackmagic cameras. Right click, apply grade, and here is all our nodes. Let me close out the gallery and you'll see what we have here. So same as before, we have the input node, which this is where you designate what camera is being used. And that will take the log footage and move it into the log C color space and, and gamma. And these other nodes are already labeled, but you can make the adjustments as you see fit. The only other ones that really have anything applied are the exposure, the white balance, where you'll notice that it has the HDR icons. And then of course the other node is the output, which sends our footage back from the color space that we've been working in over to the Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Now this may or may not work for you. You may want to build your own node tree, or you may just want to use the ones that have items built into them already, but the empty node tree option is here for you to use if you prefer to work this way. Finally, let's take a look at one of the film elements. So I'm going to apply the grade here using diffusion and let's take a look at our footage and see exactly what that's doing. I'll disable and enable the node and you'll notice how the diffusion affects the highlights in our footage. This is similar to what you see in the Cinebloom filters. So if you're going for that kind of look, you can apply this to your footage. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and check out some of my videos in the playlist on the screen right now and I'll see you in the next video.